Sociopathic Bunnies, Demonic Anteaters, A Story of Friendship and Loss. This is Robot Dreams, a hidden gem which can resonate with anyone regardless of age. When grading movies and books, many people will use numbers and stars. I think it's best first to ask, was there a clear beginning? An end? If the answer is no, then in my opinion it didn't even qualify as a story. Then I ask, was I able to finish it? If the answer was no, it wasn't a good story. The next question was whether or not the audience enjoyed it. And if the answer is yes, it's a good story. The next big indicators are whether or not the audience gave a reaction. If they ever yelped in fear, cheered with joy, or were so overwhelmed with emotion they burst into tears, then you may be witnessing the power of a great story. And better yet, there are some stories so masterfully written, they never leave the eyes of the viewer. Rather, it leaves them with questions, compels them to change, or perhaps in some way makes them a different person altogether. These stories are the ones that can endure the ages. These are masterpieces. There is a wide variety of stories, and it will be my job to examine this film, asking these questions, and it is your job as a viewer to deduce where the story falls in the spectrum. First, let's discuss Robot Dream's unique means of storytelling, then dissect the characters and discuss the general themes, after which I will give a warning and transition to the spoiler segment. If you don't want spoilers, make sure to skip to the end where I provide a top secret link to a video about the death of 2D animation and how Robot Dreams and other films may play a part in the medium's revival. Now let's discuss what makes this story so special. Robot Dreams doesn't have a single word in it. There is no dialogue. The story is told exclusively with pictures, like the silent films from over a century ago. Though of course it did use music and sound effects which added an incredible amount of depth to the characters. One of my favorite sounds was the robot's hum. Here's a little clip. I also really like the snake-like hisses made by a pair of anteaters, which artfully complemented their serpentine tongues. This detail gave them an almost demonic vibe as they attempted to severely hurt Dog as they were sledding down a mountain. Overall, I'm impressed with subtle details made by the animators and the SFX team which brought these characters to life. Telling a story exclusively through pictures is very unique, but it's also a very dangerous gamble. A reliance of subtle expression leaves room for vagueness and confusion. However, it also opens a door to reaching a wide audience, as a story exclusively told in pictures can be released globally without translation, and even more importantly, can be understood by the youngest of viewers. I brought my toddler and she even understood the complex themes. I'll get into that later. But I also think it's important to mention that after I showed her the rollerblading scene a few months ago, she kept badgering me about when I would take her to see the robot movie. There is something very magical about this rollerblading scene. Perhaps my toddler was captivated with the dynamic camera, and the artfully exaggerated movements, or perhaps a vibrant secondary action. But no, I think it was actually something else. You see, this clip told the story of a baby robot that was insecure and afraid of rollerblading, but with the help of the older dog, he soon learned to glide on his own, and was the most energetic of the lot. This is the exact same way a baby feels when they learn to walk, run, and jump, but soon they get the hang of it, and they too become the feistiest of us all. I believe that's why this scene resonates with us older people too, as we experience similar moments as parents. The scene also artfully displayed the friendship between the dog and robot. I really love the characters. Generally, when robots are portrayed in movies, they are overly serious and lack emotion. This robot, on the other hand, was constantly brimming with joy, spreading his smile to those around him. Traditionally, dogs are also depicted as playful, happy extroverts. But those words are the complete opposites of this dog. He is very straight-laced, reserved, and so hardly emotional. Or at least at the beginning of the film, anyway. Both dog and robot are oxymorons. Their relationship, on the other hand, is not filled with contradictions. In some ways, the robot sort of represents a child, as he's just coming to life and experiencing things for the first time. But even in our friendships, one will often take on the role as a mentor, and the other of a student, as one friend tries fishing for the first time and the other shows the way. Overall, the premise behind the characters is very relatable. The story of this dog and robot spanned a year, and the film depicted the beauty of all the seasons from summer to winter, from beginnings to ends, and from laughter to tears. There were times the audience had outbursts from all of these emotions, demonstrating the skills of the creative team. Now it's time to discuss the specifics of the story, and this is a part where I warn you about some impending spoilers. If you're not ready to hear those yet, don't forget to skip at the end of the video, 
and get the top secret link to my mini documentary about the death of 2D animation. But for everyone else, let's take a look at Robot Dreams and how it could revive the medium. In short, the film is about a quiet and lonely dog who wants more meaning in his life. After learning about how he could buy a robot friend, he immediately orders one. The robot comes to life and is very eager to learn about all the beauty life offers. His excitement energizes the dog, and the pair go on a variety of adventures, rollerblading in Central Park, and culminating in the visit of the beach. But as it turns out, robots aren't meant to swim, and Dog's new friend rusts out. I really love how they depict this realization. Dog stands up and motions for Robot to stand up as well, but unfortunately he is unable to. Confused, he tries again, and then Dog realizes what happened, and tries to lift his friend, but is unable to. This scenario is very similar to situations we may have all experienced with older friends and family members, as they suffer medical crises and realize they are suddenly physically unable to carry out basic tasks that they effortlessly perform throughout their lives. Such discoveries are very harrowing and traumatic, and we oftentimes don't want to come to terms with the tragic changes. That's at least how Dog felt as he desperately tried to pull Robot from the sand, but in the end was unable, and promised to return the next day, unaware this would be the last time they would ever speak. The next day, when Dog came back, the gates were locked as the beach's season had come to an end. He repeatedly attempted to enter anyway, but was prevented by the police. Similar to what many people experienced in the government lockdowns of the early 2020s, as they were unable to visit their sick and heartbroken family members, and would oftentimes never see them again. It was heartbreaking to know that Dog had made the strenuous journey so many times, and because Robot was paralyzed, he would never know. As time progressed, the actual events were mired in illusions, dreams of what could have been, had fate not intervened. Generally, such drastic shifts in perspective can be perplexing, but the writers managed to properly distinguish between these dreams and the actual events. The dreams in most cases drastically enhanced the story of showing the character's deepest yearnings and contradicting with the unpleasant situation. It also demonstrated the cruelty of certain characters, especially in a scene in which the robot hears a team of whistling bunnies that are canoeing in the ocean. They have a leak in their canoe, and the captain whistles with panic, urging them to the beach. This is quite humorous, as he wasn't paddling and offered no help to his teammates, and they were already aware of the dire situation, but he just kept whistling on anyway. They then make their way to the robot, and apply a lubricant, allowing him to move again, and he hops over the fence and eventually returns home to his friend. But that scene fades away, and the robot returns back to reality, where rather than helping him, the bunnies were severing his leg. I was mortified that such cute creatures could be so heinous and my toddler yelped, hiding her face from the screen and nestling herself tightly in my arms. Will the robot be okay, she cried. I was unsure of what to say. I was also confused as to why they wanted his leg in the first place, but to my horror, the captain only wanted the big toe, which he plucked off without a second thought, and then discarded the leg as if it was nothing. All the captain cared about was plugging his ship, and to him and his team, the robot was just a means of accomplishing his goals. The bunny's sociopathic disregard for life was extremely haunting, especially when comparing them to the innocent robot who assumed they were coming to his rescue. Had they given minimal effort to help the robot, his life would have been changed forever for the good. But they were vultures of misery, and one of the many reasons that he and Dog would never be reunited. While this is quite disconcerting, it also helps the viewer understand how a good person Dog is, as he would never do something so heinous. On the contrary, he appreciated life and wanted to cultivate its growth in others. Not all the dreams are quite so coherent. One of Dog's dreams didn't quite fit well in the progression of the story. Here Dog built a snowman, who magically came to life. The snowman took him around and invited him to go bowling. Dog was horrible at the game, and very insecure, whereas the snowman was already king of the bowling alley, and everybody there adored him. This made Dog feel even more insecure, and perhaps a little jealous. Perhaps this dream was meant to show an underlying fear deeply rooted in Dog's heart. You see, just like the snowman, Robot was also an inanimate creature, which Dog had brought to life. And he feared that just like the snowman, Robot would eventually outgrow him. Personally, the scene felt a little out of place to me, but that isn't to say it wasn't enjoyable. One of my favorite parts was when the snowman would eat a snow cone, and it would change the color of his face. The animation here was quite charming. But as I say, it felt a little out of place. But the dog wasn't the only one with insecurities. As Robot was now left legless, he struggled to find a purpose. But while he seemed useless to the psychopathic bunnies, 
One young lady bird saw the robot for what he truly was. She built a humble nest beside him, and the robot soon learned to love her eggs, and would later care for her hatchlings, singing them to sleep each night. But one day, all the little birds except for one were flying. But the robot nurtured this struggling little bird until it learned to fly, and soon it soared even higher than the others. Robot and the birds were filled with joy, but the celebrating wouldn't last as it was now time for the little birds to go their own way. This little hatchling didn't want to leave, but Robot realized that the bird had outgrown him, and that their time together had come to an end. He motioned for the birds to leave, and finally it too realized it must continue on. Meanwhile, Dog was still trying to get back to his old friends, and he attempted to appeal to the bureaucracy, but he wasn't given permission to enter the beach, and now he, like Robot, was also paralyzed. As time progressed, both learned to take responsibility, and try to make best with what they could. As Robot tried mentoring and protecting his little bird family, Dog also met a bird, a duck to be specific, and the two had a romantic fling. But Miss Ducky was quite a restless spirit, and she too would outgrow Dog. The robot was also growing more insecure. He dreamed he eventually returned to Dog, only to see he had purchased a replacement, feeling that Dog never valued him as an individual. This was artfully contrasted to Halloween scene, in which Dog looked down from his flat window and saw a costume family try and scare trick-or-treaters. He also attempted to scare others, but utterly failed. Dog wanted to be scary more than anything, and as the audience, we really felt for his failure. It was so pitiful, and I wanted this awkward little dog to just fit in. But as the evening was waning, Dog's ears perked up. Robot was climbing up the steps to his apartment, but as the door opened up, he realized it was merely a child dressed up as his long-lost friend. This provoked him into a heart-wrenching rage. The children screamed in fear, and this made my heart sink, as Dog finally got his wish to scare these kids, though it was not in the playful way that he desired. As time progressed and beach season approached, the robot was unfortunately looted by a criminal and sold a scrap. The scrap dealer and his little son took the little robot to the center of the yard. His son cheered as the father spun the robot around, sort of like how Robot spun Dog. Only the scrap dealer gave him a WWE-style death blow, and Robot's final spark of life faded. Perhaps even more horrific than Robot's end was that the son delighted in his demise. But as time went on, Robot's dented head was discovered by a curious and loving raccoon, who had spent the next few weeks trying to patch him back together. In the meantime, Dog finally returns to the beach, only discovering Robot's severed leg. Assuming the worst, he is filled with grief. Eventually, Raccoon brings Robot back to life, though he is much different than before, only having one working leg and having a stereo for a body. As time progresses, Dog finally decides he should try again. He gets a new robot friend, but chooses a different model. This time, he is much more careful and prevents his friend from going in the water, having learned from his mistakes. Meanwhile, Robot gets a new leg and is now great friends with the Raccoon. He still dreams of meeting his old friend Dog, and on the 4th of July, this lifelong dream becomes a nightmare, as Dog is not alone, but with another robot. Robot doesn't know what to think about this, and remembers the good times he had, and he plays the anthem of their friendship, September. He dances in the window, hoping Dog will see him, but Dog is distracted. As the song continues, Dog begins to tap his feet and slowly dance. Just as he turns around, Robot hides. Dog searches frantically to see if he can find him, but disappointed walks away. Robot realizes he can't let Dog go, so he runs down the stairs of his apartment to chase him down. He narrowly avoids getting hit by cars and works his way through an endless crowd of pedestrians. Finally, he barely reaches Dog and taps his shoulder, but as Dog turns around, his new robot slumps his shoulder and frowns. When Kent back to the robot hiding beside the window, we realize it was all a dream and Dog is still searching for him. Robot never comes out, and Dog disappointedly leaves after searching for him. He then happily continues with his new robot friend, and Robot celebrates with his new raccoon friend. My wife was mortified with this ending, but my toddler understood it, and she explained it to my wife. It's okay. The robot has a new friend, and so does the dog. She understood that just as the birds outgrew the robot, the robot and dog also outgrew each other, their time together came to an end, and now they couldn't go back to each other. In a sense, they were both living their worst nightmares. Dog and Grobot had outgrown each other, but they also had new friends. Only they weren't replacements, they were different. And while their old times would always be cherished, 
they had come to an end. I am surprised that so many complex ideas could be boiled down in a way that even my toddler could understand. I attribute this to the visual storytelling, which didn't use words as a crutch for such complex ideas. The film made us feel a variety of emotions, the joy of beginnings, the fear of loss, and both the sorrow and solace in endings. Of course, there were so many great lessons, too. The most important being of learning to find joy despite unfortunate circumstances which are out of our control. The animation was also excellent. No major American studio has attempted to classically animate a film since 2011. Perhaps Robot Dreams could be a spark that rekindles this dead medium. It's hard to say for sure, but if you're curious to learn more about the death of 2D animation, make sure to click on this top secret link. I haven't released this video to the public. Of course, please let me know what you think about Robot Dreams. And also, don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.